Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. In this episode, we're gonna be solving a Physics 7A practice problem on the topic of modeling with kinetic and potential energies. As usual, if you're finding this content helpful, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. It really helps our channel. This is the problem that we're gonna be working on today. So we have a block of mass M is initially pushed back against a spring, a distance X from its equilibrium. The spring constant is K. The spring is placed at a height h above the ground as shown in the diagram. When the block is released from the spring, it slides down a ramp staying in contact with the surface the entire time. The first thing that we have to do is create an energy interaction diagram for the process starting at a block compressed against the spring to when the block is at distance d above the ground. Uh, we have to write the energy conservation equation in terms of all the parameters m, k, x, h, d, uh, v, d, n, or g. Uh, the equations are shown below, even though I don't have them on the slide, but feel free to look at the uh, printable PDF version. And let's just get started. We'll look at two when we get there. So as you can see, I have everything uh, written down over here pretty much. So I have a little bit of the drawing, the parameters, my equations, so we're ready to go. The only thing that we have to do is a complete energy interaction diagram. Uh, so let's just go ahead and look at my notes about what constitutes a complete energy interaction diagram, a full credit energy interaction diagram. So we've been using this every single video that I've made so far. So, you know, just make sure that you're always ticking up those check marks in terms of like, is this answer complete? Um, it's always very sad when an answer is right, but because it's not complete, it loses points. Like that's really the one way you don't want to be losing points just because you missed some little detail. So let's see, the first thing is defining the system. So in this case, our system is going to be, is the problem telling us what the system is going to be? No, okay, so we can just make the system whatever we want. In this particular case, they aren't giving us a constraint or like, oh, just the uh, block is the system or just the block and the spring or just the block and so and so. So I think that what I'm gonna do is just do the uh, block and the spring pretty much. Yeah, so just the block and the spring. And the reason why I want to include both of them is because when I'm moving on to the next step, I like my systems to be closed personally, just because it's easier to have the equation be equal to zero. But again, if you just want to do the block, then the spring goes outside and vice versa. The instructions aren't really being very helpful, uh, but friction is negligible. And because of that, if I include block and spring, then I should have a closed system. So my interval, which again, I always have to define, is initial, uh, my block is at height um, h, b is equal to zero, and my spring initial is uh, compressed a distance x from equilibrium and now my final uh, block height d this is the final state oh the problem said that this was distance b and the velocity, it, the problem just calls it BD. So you just have like final velocity going down. And then my spring is just not compressed and not really doing anything at the end. So we have our system and we have our initial and then we have our final. So now we move on to actually making the big bubble. In this case, my big bubble is going to be a closed system because I selected the parameters inside the system to make it that way. So I'm going to draw my... 
that's the worst one I've ever drawn yet. Okay. And then because everything that's uh, transferring energy is inside the bubble, Q, W is equal to zero. Okay. So now we need to figure out how many energy changes do we have. Well, um, initially it's very easy to see that the spring is gonna have an energy change because the spring starts compressed and then it decompresses. So we're gonna draw one bubble for the spring. Each bubble needs to have objects, so spring. Type of energy changes uh, that's changing. In this case, that would be just delta P E spring. And in this case, it is going down because it had some energy, but then you decompressed it. So um, let's just say that x is going down because x is the uh, compressed distance. So your initial was that it was compressed an x amount, and then your final. Um, zero slash not compressed okay so now let's just move on to the block so the block the first thing that happens to the block going from here to here is that we had a change in height so because we had a change in height that means that potential energy is changing uh, so block But now this one is due to gravity, and that would be because the uh, height is changing. So we went from this height to this height. So that means that we went up. That would mean that this goes up because this goes up. And then your initial is um, H, then your final is D. Now, please notice that even though the block went up and then uh, down and then up and then down, the only thing that matters is your initial and your final um, states. Everything that happened in between, it really doesn't matter. Like it could have done like seven loops, and if it um, started at the same height and at the same height, then it really doesn't matter anything that happened in between. So we just have our initial and final. Energy is a state function. This is why this is uh, the case. Now, we also had a change in velocity and velocity is an indicator for kinetic energy. So we need a bubble for kinetic energy. Change in kinetic energy and velocity. So kinetic energy went up because our initial state is zero and then our final state is equal to b um d over here now what happens if our problem says oh it started over here and then it did all the loops and finished like at zero well then this bubble doesn't belong here because if your initial is zero your final is zero then nothing really happened even though a lot happened in terms of like momentum and things that you'll see on seven uh, B in terms of energy, um, yes, they fluctuated, but there is really no change between those two points. Well, anyways, so we have three uh, three bubbles, one for the spring, two for the blocks. So all we are missing is our equation. The equation is, you know, arguably or to me the easiest part because if you have everything else, then and it's well defined, and you know you have your initial and final, then the equation is just literally copying these things over here. So you start by formulating your equation. On the left side of the equation, one term per bubble. So let's just go delta P E spring plus this bubble, delta P E graph plus this bubble, delta kinetic energy. In this case, is equal to zero because the right side um, is for Q and W, and we don't have any. So now I just substitute my equations. So this is for the spring, so it's one half K um, delta X square plus gravity is uh, M G 
delta y plus kinetic energy one half m delta b2 and then that's equal to zero and then i guess because the instructions are telling us to use uh, m kx dot ta, ta, ta that we have to substitute these deltas and then at that point we're done so let's just go ahead and do that so we have one half k this is final minus initial so this would be uh, x squared Oh, and it's final minus initial, so it's actually zero minus x squared, so very important. Uh, this negative sign comes from the fact that when you do final minus initial, you're doing zero minus, uh, zero squared minus x squared, so the zero I'm not going to write, but then the negative part you keep, so that's this uh, negative sign over here. Uh, mg final minus initial, so d minus h plus one half um, final minus initial, in this case it's b squared minus zero, so this is a positive, and v d squared minus zero, which I'm not gonna write, is equal to zero, and then this will be your final answer right here. Final answer. So now let's just go ahead and move to uh, part b of this problem. So part B is saying now assume that the surface is rough and the effects of friction are significant. Explain in words how you would modify, if at all, the physical system, whether it's open or closed, and the energy systems involved. Okay, so basically on the first part of the problem there is no friction, so there is no heat. Now there are several ways in which you can modify this in order to accommodate friction. But I'm just going to go ahead and go with what I would answer, which is also what I'm pretty sure a 7 a student would answer firsthand, which is that instead of having a closed system, because there is no friction, I would put, I would have an open system, so dashed instead of solid. And then on that open system, I would have some heat going out because friction is just like rubbing of surfaces and that friction is basically just heat, right? It's heat from rubbing your uh, two uh, surfaces together. So by thinking about it in that way, I would just do this dashed open system and have some Q going out towards the uh, rails or whatever this thing is, the floor. And that's how I would modify my answer. Um, so yeah, that was it. We didn't have to do it again. We just had to like comment with words what would change. So that's basically what I would do. Just open up the system and have some cue going out. So anyways, this is the end of this problem. If you guys uh, have found this content helpful, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. It really helps our channel. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll try to get to them as fast as I can. And I'll see you guys in the next video.